Hey, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. And today I'm not reviewing Batman Everybody Lies. Now, I'm not reviewing it because I strongly believe that I'm not the target audience for this game. Batman Everybody Lies is a continuation of the Detective series from Portal Games, a series that I have not played any of the other games in there, and so I can't tell you how this one compares to those, I can just tell you that this one doesn't work for me. So it will be review adjacent, because I'll tell you what the game does well, I'll tell you what, why I see this as being a game that would work for many people, and I'll tell you why it doesn't work for me, but... I hesitate to call it a review because I just don't think that I'm the target audience. And granted, there are times in the past where I do think I'm the target audience. Maybe I am, maybe I'm not. A longer conversation. You'll still get an opinion. You'll still get how the game plays. Timestamps to everything down below. So, Batman Everybody Lies. What is this game? And I'm not entirely sure if it's called Batman Everybody Lies or Everybody Lies, but this is a detective game. This is a game which you are taking on a case. Uh, there's going to be four cases in this game. There's going to be a tutorial case. There's going to be case one, two, and three in the in the box as well. So a total of four cases, one that's fairly shorter and giving you a kind of an intro to the mechanics of the game, and then three more that are much more in-depth. The game's going to give you a premise, a starting premise. So for example, in the tutorial, and for the record, throughout the course of this review, I will have some tutorial components that may or may not be briefly exposed. I will only in any way reference tutorial stuff, so everything else is safe. You're still safe. You're not going to get any spoilers. Even for the tutorial, you might get a glimpse of a card. I mean, if you really, really want to completely avoid everything, don't look at the screen, but most things will be pretty safe. So, you're going to have a tutorial. You'll pull out this envelope. You'll grab the little sheet. You'll read the sheet, a whole bunch of text on the back, giving you a premise of what's going on. A premise as well as different instructions. You know, which detective you may or may not have to play as in the investigation, what, what, the, what additional tokens to start with, what's going on, what your primary goal is. From there, you'll have various players involved in the game. You're going to have a variety of characters, minimum two characters in the game, and the other characters that aren't in the game will be playing as informants instead. So they'll still be present, but kind of as non-player characters. Each character that's in the game will have their own personal goal, something else that they're going for along with the main case that the other players don't know. You might be trying to find out a piece of information to discover the connection between two characters in the story. You have something else that you're trying to figure out which adds a degree of tension to this otherwise cooperative experience. Because you have a limited clock as you try to figure out what's going on in the case and you're trying to figure out, well, there's an overarching story, we're all aligned in that, but I'm trying to figure out this, you're trying to figure out that, so I'd rather we spend our time, effort, and energy going down that lead and you you'd rather we talk to this person or that character instead. So there's a little bit of a push and pull, a little bit of tension thrown into an otherwise cooperative experience. From there, you're basically going on these leads. You'll have your starting case. That'll give you the first things to go through. And then from there, you'll have your, your, your set of cards over here. I have the prologue set up over here. We have case one, two, and three, the personal goal deck and the scene deck. The personal goal decks are going to be the cards and things that you're trying to go for on an individual level. Case one, two, and three are case one, two, and three. Prologue is going to be all the leads in the prologue, and then the scene deck will be specific visual indicators of certain scenes that you come across that you'll be told to grab as you go through certain cards. So I have my prologue deck. The first tutorial, the tor first tutorial over here, prologue is going to have you go through one of three starting areas. Again, no real spoilers. You can't read the text anyways, but these three starting options are the areas I can go to to start trying to track down what happened. You'll go ahead and you'll read the card. The card will instruct you, first of all, give you a bit of story, a background, what's happening, who's talking to, what happened there, just the various things going on in the story. You'll also be told to gain various cards. You Perhaps you'll gain a scene card. Perhaps you'll gain a personal goal card for a character. Perhaps you'll gain various tokens you'll be utilizing. These lead tokens can be used for different things to trade in to gather personal tokens over here or these tokens that'll be necessary to visit some locations as you flip them over. Again, we'll set up the tutorial over here so you won't see all the elements going on, but that's basically what's going to be going on as far as these cards. So they give you instructions and story and thematic elements going on. Additionally, some cards, depending on the cards you go through, some cards will be the tail end of a lead. You'll go through it, you'll find out some information, you learn that this character is talking to that character, that character is in prison with that character, you'll learn different aspects of what's going on, and then some leads will give you more leads. You start talking to this person and you unlock a new pathway of new leads you can go through. And you can see the tutorial deck is less than half the size of a full actual case, and the cases get more and more complex. Each case is giving you a lot of text to read in addition to your starting sheet that you get from this envelope. And then you also have over here on the app, this is an app integrated game, or not really app so much as website, but we have our characters over here. We have the prologue, we have the expansions, the, the, the various cases. You'll be tapping through your characters. I don't want to reset them over there, but you'll be tapping through the case. You'll be entering various case IDs, uh, various pieces of information representing files or different things you have that you found, and you'll be given more text to read on your computer, on your screen, whatever tablet device you're using for the case. 
and all this information is being present to you is being presented to you so that you can figure out what happened so you can answer the ultimate question what happened to this character who committed that murder who kidnapped that person and then you can answer your side personal goals as well because you have been trying to go down this pathway to try to figure out what happened and what's going on what the connections are who did this why did they do that you're trying to answer all these questions as you hit these weep cap spaces over here, one, two, and three, you'll be given the opportunity to discuss things with other players. And discussing things is up to you how much you want to share, but it's up to you. Again, it's a cooperative game for the most part, with a tiny drop of your own personal goals on the side. And then from there, eventually, at some point, you'll go ahead to this computer thing situation, and you'll enter that you're ready to solve the case. You'll be presented with a list of questions, a list of questions answering that ultimate question. Who did do the thing, again, spoilers aside, who is connected to that person? What is the backstory or the reason or the situation for all those answers? So it's effectively multiple choice as you go through it, given the questions you're trying to find the answer to, and then a bit of a multiple choice as to what the answers are. You'll go ahead and answer those questions. You'll then be asked where you were on the time track as well, whether you're in green, yellow, or red. And then between the questions you got right and how much time it took you to do it, you'll be given a score, as well as a full kind of recap of everything that happened, because you, through all the cards you've touched upon, have been given little hints of what actually happened in the core narrative. The core narrative is here. You're talking to this person who kind of sidled into the narrative over there. You're seeing a little bit of this story. This character is connected to that character. That character's mother references something that happened, but there is a central story. A small block of text, they give you a short and a long version for it, as far as giving you what actually happened. What's the situation? What's the story? Kind of putting it all together so you can read it in one comprehensive format, and then a drop of an epilogue as well, and then on to the next case. Rinse and repeat. You could reset cases at any given point, but that is basically what is happening in Batman Everybody Lies, or Detective Everybody Lies, or just Everybody Lies. So, ease of play. The game is incredibly easy to table. The rulebook is very, very short. Uh, Watch It's Played already has a how to play video up. You can check that out. And it's going to walk you for the most part through the experience fairly easily. The rulebook is very clear, very easy. It's like, like four pages. There's not a lot going on here because the game ultimately comes down to reading the various cards and trying to put two and two together. You have to learn a bit how the tokens work, how moving to locations work, when to go into leads or not going to leads. Again, you should read the rules. I'm not saying don't read the rules. I'm saying it's a very, very easy game to get set up and tabled. The prologue case is going to come in at fairly short, maybe half an hour, 40 minutes for the experience, maybe a drop longer if you're really trying to read every card, also depending on the number of players you have on the table. And then the longer cases, well, they can run two hours-ish, depends on how fast you're going. I like to read every piece of information. More than that, I like to reread every piece of information to try to remember what pieces I'm trying to put together. That person referenced a name. I want to see if that name was on those 14 cards earlier. That character referenced a time. It said 9.15. Is that relevant to the fact that earlier, I remember that other card said 7 o'clock. Is that going to be relevant to my case as I go through it. And so I might be taking a little longer to go through it because I like to read all the stuff. I like to really feel like I'm in an escape room in a detective story putting together all the pieces of information. As far as player count, this is a two to four player game. You might think that this is a solo game and in theory you could play it solo, but you would be losing a big part of what the game is doing because of those personal goals. That degree of tension of trying to do one thing versus another will not be present when you're playing your own game. You'll, I guess, be struggling between the two characters and the timer and trying to figure that out, but it, it, you're going to lose some of the tension if you play this one solo. You could absolutely play it solo. The prologue is one which I did play the prologue solo. It, it definitely can take away from the experience. I would recommend this one as a two to four player game, but if you really want to dive into it, I do believe you'll be able to experience this solo and still get... 80-85% of the experience out of this. As far as what I like, don't like, and see others not liking. This is basically sounding like a review. Or sound, it's very much fitting into the standard review format I have over here, but it's not a review. I think, you know what, maybe I'll break here from my usual review format. It's not a review because Batman Everybody Lies is presenting a detective mystery, and it's doing so in a way that I understand the connecting points and ties that it's linking together. And I think that for some people, this might be an incredible experience because of how much world building there is in this story. There's a lot of information being fed at you, and not all of it is relevant. They're not constantly just giving you, well, if they give you information, it must be relevant. No, they're giving you the real full story going on. It's like someone wrote a little bit of a book and said, great, now we're going to parse this book out into various cards, and you have to figure out which elements connect to others. And that's for better and for worse, at least as far as I'm concerned, because... Remember how a few minutes ago I mentioned I like to look at every single time or card or piece of information? One thing off the bat that breaks that for me is I don't mind having a whole pile of cards laid out in front of me. I don't. That's fine with me. 
but I really don't love looking back and forth between the computer and the cards and sharing that experience with multiple people at the same time. It's just, it's too much information to constantly go back to. It's too many heads peering at the same card. And I'm going to show you a card here. Again, no real spoilers. This will be like one of the first cards you'll have. The text here is absolutely tiny. That text is, is minuscule. You can't have, you can barely have a single person looking at this card, let alone two. And so the absorbability of all the information you'll be presented with in the game, between the fact that some of it is locked behind a computer screen, and I believe that this is normal for the detective series in general, the absorbability of being able to reread information is, is a lot. Now, the game does recommend that you take notes. The game has, it's like, take a note, take a pen, take a, a phone, take notes as you go. You shouldn't necessarily be re-referencing things, but that's just not the way I want to dive into this. Because if I'm taking notes, then I want to take notes on everything. I'll be writing down way too much from every single card, and that's not how I want to experience the game. But then again, trying to remember things is not how I want to experience the game. And going back to all the cards is not how I want to experience the game. The key word for all those aspects is not how I want to experience the game. I think that this game offers you a lot of text, it offers you a lot of role building, it offers you cases you can go through and enough pieces of information to tie things together. Now there is luck in the game for sure, you'll be making judgment calls about which leads to follow and some leads will give you more information than others, but all the leads are slowly advancing the clock in you and so you do have to make hard decisions as you go through the game and decisions that may or may not be paid off with luck versus not luck, which, you know, trying to make educated judgment calls about what you're going to get as you go through it. Now, the good news is this clock is meaningless. It's just a score. And so if your primary goal is to just experience the case, take as much time as you need, go through it. Heck, ignore the clock if you really don't want to deal with it because you could do that. It depends on what your goal is with this case. This does fall into a standard pattern I've had with many detective escape room style games in which there is a clock. And to me, the clock is an incentive to keep things on track. And I do like the existence of the clocks, but then when a push comes to shove, I'm playing my little unlock escape room and the timer goes past an hour and I'm still playing it because I don't don't care. My first goal is to experience the journey, the detective, the case, the unlock, the puzzle. My first goal is to experience what you put in front of me. To me, the clock, the timer, represents something that has a bit of pressure on, so I don't take forever, but once that pressure runs out, I'm still going to keep playing. I'm still going to try to unpack or uncover what's going on. And when the clock hits these various points, I have to make a decision about how much do I care about getting a better score versus how much I just want to go through the rest of the lead cards to really build out that case. There is a sense of satisfaction when you actually, you know, you hit the first mark of yellow and you're like, I got it. I know what's happened. And there is a sense of satisfaction when you have those cards put together and you then proceed to enter the solution. But there's also a sense of frustration when you're clicking into red and you just don't feel like you've gotten the information you need. And at that point, you have to make a decision. Do you want to go ahead and make a guess into the game? Do you want to sit there and just, well, I'll, I'll do the best I can with what I have? Or would you rather go through a few more cards because it is more satisfying to experience the case that's put in front of you? Again, I like the existence of the clock. I think it's a good thing to have time as restrictions, to have a sense of, of tightness around what you're doing. But when push comes to shove, once I hit the end of that clock, you have to make a decision about which thing you care about more. And for me, it's come down to how much information I have. If I have enough information that I think I can reasonably go through the end game questions, I'll do so. If I feel I don't, I'll keep reading lead cards. But for me, Batman Everybody Lies is a game that's given me a lot of world building. It's given me a lot of story and, and narrative and different aspects. To me, the downsides come from the fact that it's giving me a detective case that I want to solve. But I don't want to take notes. And I don't want to constantly reference the giant pile of cards and all the case IDs that you have on your computer that you're referencing, the little case files you're pulling up. There's just too much information to go through. So, where am I with this one? Not really a review, but where am I anyways? I understand what Batman's going for. I understand what the Detective Series is going for, and I think it's the right game for a lot of people based on what it's doing. I think you should just pay attention to the things that did and didn't work for me. If your goal is to experience this, if your goal is to just go through it and just read the cards and deal with the situation and put together pieces of information, this is not a, a, an escape room in a typical sense. This is not like giant pieces of information that you have to secretly tie this to that. There are hints, there are clues, there are tangential pieces of information, but sometimes it also just comes down to whether you got the right lead card or not, whether you followed the right trail that gives you the piece of information that you either need collectively as a whole or need individually. There's giving you a lot of, of world building and a lot of story. And it's up to you to figure out how you want to engage with that and what you want to take out of the experience. I think Batman Everybody Lies was a fine experience for me. But given the nature of the way the game is presented, given the nature of the just the overload abundance of information, as opposed to the more intricate puzzle that you're solving, I find that I tend to lean towards the puzzle preference 
as opposed to the here's a whole lot of information, go ahead and read through it, and eventually things will either fit together or they won't. I think it's a fine experience. I, I was compelled enough to go through all the cases. I don't think I'm compelled enough to dive back into it for a subsequent expansion or the rest of the detective series or any of that. And that's basically where I am with this not really a review. An opinion, but not really a review. In any case, as far as other game recommendations, first of all, the unlock puzzles in general. Unlocks have always been my go-to as far as if you like this style of game, if you want something like this. And then similarly adjacent, another series that hasn't really worked for me as well, but for slightly different but a little bit overlapping reasons, the Chronicles of Crime series from Lucky Duck Games has another way of approaching the detective genre, another way of asking questions between cards and items and locations, a whole different way to dive into an equally compelling and for me equally frustrating uh, mix of detective engagement or detective something or other. There's a word there. In any case, until next time, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. I hope you enjoyed this video, and as always, have a good one.